We were born out of necessity. It's said in history that the winners write the stories. I would like the story of Dykes on Bikes in some ways to actually be representative of those big, strong, powerful females that had the strength to claim the word dyke. I think everybody should know about where Dykes on Bikes started from. In the beginning, they were like the protectors of the, the gay community because there was a lot of gay crime out there. In the Sydney Star Observer, there was so many men getting murdered and we're, we're a force to be reckoned with. We're scary. Let's get up Oxford Street and protect these guys. We would drive around all over um, Darlinghurst, Surrey Hills, and in the back streets, and you'd find people. We found lots of people who were a little bit intoxicated or maybe drug-affected who were in the gutter. We'd pick them up, call a taxi or radio through and get uh, ambulance or police to come and take them home because that's, they were the people who were vulnerable and who were getting attacked, robbed, kicked, bashed, whatever. We weren't originally called Dykes on Bikes. I personally had a fear of being called a dyke on a bike uh, written on my back. But we um, chose to call ourselves the Vixens, which was a sassy woman. And I think later on down the track, the club that currently is still going today called themselves Dykes on Bikes, which, you know, we kind of paved the way. They would walk Oxford Street in their leathers. And they were a an intimidating presence on Oxford Street and a safety presence. I can still go out to clubs and stuff and say, oh, yeah, I'm a dog on a bike, and they're going, oh, my God, I loved it when you guys were on Oxford Street. That, that's the main thing. Like, we just wanted to make sure that we were looking out for our own. Ride day. Ride day is like no other day because you're actually excited to be up early in the morning. It's not a pain in the ass. You get ready, you make sure your bike's ready, get to a meeting point, and then we yeah, head off on the ride, and then ending with lunch, which is usually at a pub or a restaurant. After a long day ride, it's nice to have a good feed. I love that sense of freedom. I'm getting more comfortable filtering through traffic. I have a, a bit of a headset, so I um, I listen to music while I while I ride too, and I can still concentrate whilst doing that. <laughs> Just like I love cruising through streets and that sort of thing. Yeah. Seriously, everyone that rides with me just goes, oh my God, you're so gentle, you're so calm. I'm like, yeah, because I'm not like a rev head. I just like to cruise. My, my bike's a big cruiser. Even if you've got a full face helmet and all your gear, you're literally there. You're in nature, you're in the ride. Nothing else matters on a motorcycle. It's just, you are in the moment. So getting to be in the moment on a motorcycle, is probably awesome. <laughs> Riding a motorcycle is part of who I am. And so, as a motorcyclist, that is always going to be part of my life. What's the ultimate number of bikes to have? 
one more than what you already have. Doesn't matter how many you've got, you always want one more. So my uncle actually rode when he was living in Australia. He was from New Zealand and he was over here and he had a, um, a Honda 250 and he would turn up with my auntie on the back and we'd all be like, take us for a ride, take us for a ride. So I think I must have only been about eight or nine when I first got on the bike and I was just like, oh my God, I need to get a bike. So from then I've always wanted a bike and I've had one, two, three, I've had four bikes now. If we've, if we've got to overtake, you know, we a bike will pull in and slow down and slow the cars down so that we stay together as a group and we all get in front of that car just to try and keep everybody together. That's why we're there. We're all there to be together and have fun and do what we do. So the most I've ridden with is probably about 15 guys and it was definitely a different experience because the boys would ride off and they just sort of leave you and they just sort of don't worry. Whereas you ride with dykes on bikes, there's a ride leader and there's a tail end Charlie rider. So everyone is kept together. So it's nice to have that that sort of caring and nurturing with some of these older riders that, you know, they actually will look after you. I joined the Dykes on Bikes because I felt it would be a good opportunity to ride with like-minded people, obviously for our passion and love for bikes, and just chill without no judgement or fear. And I, I love it. I love what it has to offer and the, the journey so far. Growing up in Sydney, you, you hear about these, you know, sort of legendary, you know, tough chicks on, on bikes and that sort of thing. And they always seemed to be a, a bit of a mystery to me. And then I met a few and then it wasn't less mystery than <laughs> mysterious. <laughs> and yeah, I think I just heard about it through being in the community and, and stuff. And of course, at my first Mardi Gras, when I used to go as a spectator, of course, they always started the parade. And you hear that roar and, you know, the, the, that's just the best way to start the parade, I think. And I think that if you're going to be part of something like Dykes on Bikes, we're not just a motorcycle club. There's many motorcycle clubs out there. We stand for so much more. I think it's important for members to, to understand the history, just to know where the clubs come from, what we've been through as a group. Those who fail to learn history are doomed to repeat it. So if we don't fight for it and keep it alive, we'll forget rights can be very, very easily just wiped away. In one major act of legislation, they can disappear overnight. We came together because we had to, you know, even way back protecting these gay men, our, our brothers and sisters. I don't know if you've heard why the Dykes on Bikes lead the parade. We lead the path to safety because that's what we've always done. Where Dykes on Bikes started from, for their small part, they they did an amazing job. Modern day, I think the Dykes on Bikes is a great collaboration of like-minded people that enjoy their riding and support the community. And we want to uh, give back as much as we take in. And we try, every day we try to give back as best we can. Dykes on Bikes community, it's family. It's where I feel comfortable to be me in a public space, not just behind closed doors. It's just nice to be free. Although the image is big leather clad lesbians who, who you know, drink hard, that's probably never really been us. There are advantages to having the image that we did, but unfortunately at times it can bite us in the bum. I know when I was a lot younger, I was obviously intimidated and 15 years ago to now, I think the perception has definitely changed. My perception has definitely changed. And riding with them and spending time with the Dykes on Bikes, you know, some of the most beautiful people I've ever met. I think the public perception goes back a long time in history and a lot of people still have that perception that they're 
Oh, the dogs on bikes, they're big, mean, nasty people. It's not like that when you're on the inside of it, but they can think whatever they want. If they want to think I'm tough and bad, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm a softy at heart, but... <laughs> Our reputation, our knowledge of what we are and who we are, that we're not all these big and butcher and we're going to beat you up. Well, no, actually, we have a lot of femme members and trans members and everything members. Like, you know what I mean? We're all, we're all different walks of life. And it's getting, the walks of life, as we know, are getting bigger and wider as, as we go. So I think Dark Sun Bikes is only going to get bigger and bolder. And I can't wait. <laughs>